Stewart from Marienville Models, DJI dealer from the UK. In this video we'll be covering the final assembly of one of our ready to fly packages. In this package this includes the Phantom 2, the Zemuse H3 3D 3 axis gimbal, the Black Pearl diversity monitor, and the options of the Spironet antennas. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to unpack your Phantom 2 from the box. So if we move these out of the way. Now when you receive your Phantom, this is how it will look when you remove it from the box. On the base of the Phantom, we have already pre-installed the video transmitter and an optional on-screen display. This will give uh, vital information such as battery level, um, how many satellites you're locked into, and also other things like the height, distance, direction to home. Now we will have already fitted the gimbal, but again we will have removed it purely for shipping. So this video covers fitting the gimbal back onto, which is pretty much a plug and play affair. So the first thing we need to do is to remove the 3D gimbal from its box. Now be careful when you remove it from its box, is it does have a very fine connector just on the side there. And that's very fragile, so it's important that you don't uh, snag that on the way out. Now, the first thing we need to do before we actually plug it into uh, clip it into place is you do actually need to plug it in already. Now, the connector, which is as you'll notice, the pins are not are are, are biased to the top or the bottom, so we will have already orientated that so it's ready to plug in. But just worth double checking. So if we just plug that in there, that's simply it. Then place it over the little rubber bungs and then to put them in, just give them a wee squeeze and then just poke them up. Now make sure they do actually come up into this other portion of the mount. I have seen some people where they've just laid it on top of the rubbers and then put the security clips on top. So you end up with the gimbal hanging below the rubbers, which is not really an ideal scenario. So just poke all those in. Now you might notice that these little plastic clips, there are only two on them. This is correct. Your gimbal is supplied with four, however you only use two and the other two are actually for, um, are actually for spare if you actually have to take it off. Because the clips that retain onto these little uh, clips are not removable so you've actually got to cut them off. So if you go to your small accessory box, which is supplied with your gimbal, in here, you'll have a pack like that. So in there you'll have two spear rods, but you'll actually have four of the discs. That's simply because we don't fit them on because we remove the gimbal, but before you fly, you need to put these on. What these are for, in the event of a heavy landing, or unfortunately a crash, um, what this stops is the gimbal can come off its mountings, but not go flying off and te tear the cable out of the back. So all you simply have to do is put these clips on top and then just push them down home. Same on the back and just push down. And now when we turn the Phantom over, the gimbal will now be on the bottom hanging down. Okay, for this next part you're gonna need two items. Of course you're going to need your GoPro camera and then from the accessory bag we were just in, what you need to do is you need to take out the little pack that's got uh, a little USB connector and a spare ribbon connector. But actually all we need is the little USB connector. Now this is the ribbon connector that DJI are now using. 
it is actually quite fragile. You've got to be careful with it. This is why you get a spare one. So when you're putting it on, just obviously it will be going into the very sort of small slot. So just be very careful when you're uh, popping it in there. In fact, if I just move that round, I think this is the best way to do is just to pinch it in your fingers there and then it should push in and then that's it in. That's, see it's quite thin and you've got to watch, you've got to remember as well when you pull your GoPro off the back plate, remember to pull that out first otherwise it tends to just pull it straight out which is not going to be a good thing doing it time and time again it eventually split. Okay, next part we're going to need from the pack again, we need this camera retaining bracket and the 2.5mm by 6.3mm screw, so we'll need two of those. Okay, now the next stage we're going to actually fit the GoPro onto the actual back plate. So the first thing you need to do, you just pull the little retaining clip back, set the GoPro onto the back plate, then get your screw on your screwdriver. Now I'm trying to position this so you can see it but it's a bit difficult with all the undercarriage in the way. And then what you do is take your mounting bracket, place that over the front of your GoPro, line it up with the holes and pop that screw in. So now there are two of these, you need to actually, believe it or not, you need to put both on, otherwise if the bracket's not pulled tight in against the camera, it can actually cause all sorts of weird problems for the gimbal. The gimbal can start making funny noises and vibrating and pulsing. So watch out for that one, put them both on. Now once you've got that on, you need to now plug in the USB connection onto the camera. So now B, try and get this so you can see it. So be very careful when you're plugging this in. As I keep saying, the ribbon is really fragile. And then that's it, just push it home. And that's basically the camera installed onto the bracket. Now, if you're only ever using your Phantom, uh, sorry, your, your GoPro on your Phantom, you could leave the camera actually already mounted on. Unfortunately, to get to the memory card, you do have to remove the, uh, the USB socket, unfortunately. But that is that already mounted on for the next part of the video. Now before we can go any further we do need to actually charge things up. So we need to be charging our phantom battery and we also need to charge the screen itself. So the first thing you need to do is remove the battery out of the phantom. There's two pinch clips, one there and one on the bottom. Just give them a, a pinch, good firm pull and outside the battery comes. Now, in the white box inside your Phantom package, you'll find the switching power supply for the Phantom. Now, it comes with an unusual connector, so the connector just opens up, just pull the bar all the way back and exposes two pins. And then if you get your battery, you can see you can't really get it on the wrong way. It just merely just pulls in and slides in. As soon as you slide it in, you'll notice on the end cap, it is now starting to charge. So the scrolling indicators there are, are telling that, you, that it's charging and when it gets to the very end it simply just turns off and that is it charged. You also have a little power supply light so you know that your charger is actually plugged in as well. Now to charge the monitor this is pretty simple as well. Just take it out of its packaging. You've got two power points on the back. If you look closely, it actually says on there you've got DC out and DC in because you can actually use the power, the battery from your screen to actually power other things. This is the battery here, which is removable and you can actually get spare batteries. It simply just clicks off. This will give the monitor power for about a couple hours depending on you know brightness settings and how you're using it. So you can get spare ones there available from our website. Just push that back in. That's it back in and then simply take your power supply once again and then just plug it into the DC in supply there flip it over 
and you now have a red light showing you that it's now charging. So uh, take, I think it takes about an hour and a half to charge. Uh, same with the Phantom. So basically go away, do other stuff, look at some of my other videos and just leave them to charge. Okay, next thing we need to do is we need to mount the monitor onto the transmitter. Now included in the package is this uh, transmitter mount. Now I try if I can to build pre-build these up. Sometimes just if we're hurried we, we don't manage to get them built up. So what I'm doing, if I show you this in some sort of detail, uh, as they're not actually supplied with instructions, typical sort of Chinese product, uh, you can kind of see how that is actually assembled and actually mounted onto uh, the transmitter. So once you've got all that mounted on, it's a simple thing for actually mounting it. You're supplied with a kind of like a thumb screw and the monitor which has a tripod mount on the bottom. So that just simply goes in the bottom and that mounts on top. Give it a good tighten. Right, and that's you pretty much ready with the with the monitor now mounted onto the transmitter and this can actually be positioned as well the mounts are soft so if you want to fold it up you can do I'll just pull it back again now as it is out of the box you probably find this a little bit top heavy where the monitor will be wanting to tip the transmitter this way a little handy tip to do actually if you get yourself a thing called a neck strap which is like a it's like a lanyard that you put around your neck and and actually clip it onto the mount that's on the transmitter here um, hook it into that and that actually gives you a very good balance because it's kind of lifting it by there and it gives it a more sort of neutral balance point also as well you don't want to accidentally drop your transmitter especially with the screen on it okay the next thing we need to do is we actually need to mount the aerials on now this is a diversity screen, so it's actually got two receivers built into it. The idea being that the receiver with the best reception gets is, is what the monitor will switch to. And it allows you to switch to two different types of uh, aerials. So you can have two of the same, or you can have one that's good for sort of round and about reception, and one, <coughs> sorry, one for direction. Now the one, the aerials that we recommend, now these are an option. Now are the uh, what we call the Spiro net antennas and these give you a very good omnidirectional uh, signal. Now the, the monitor will come with these ones and these are actually okay to get you going but I would for the for the extra I would definitely upgrade to these aerials. Now if you just remove the little rubber bobbins now it doesn't matter which one you put this on you have to but it doesn't matter I generally just screw it onto the left hand sided one so it does also, these are not handed as well, they're both the same, so you screw one of those on and then simply just take one of the other aerials and put it on to the other side. What you'll find is, because that's the better antenna, you'll find it's probably quite biased to this one here. So, and then just basically bend it so, it's, so that kind of sits flat. Um, and then that's basically the monitor ready to go. Then simply to switch the monitor on. Now remember, we've already, having set this up, this will be ready to go. Although when I switch it on, we'll get nothing just now because we haven't got the phantom on. But that's the power button there. And you just simply push it, hold it, and then you see the red light come on. And you'll see the wee welcome screen. And that is now powering up. Now obviously we'll just get left with static because the phantom's not on. So what I'll do is, I'll just turn that off just now. So just push it. Hold it, boof, that's it off. Okay, the next thing we need to do, we need to actually put the battery that we charged up earlier into your Phantom. So obviously it's uh, directional, so make sure you've got the contacts on the side. Just slide it in and then push it in firmly. Now, two definite don'ts with your Phantom prior to turning on. Two things, never ever turn your Phantom on without the GoPro properly installed. The gimbal is balanced, and if you turn it on without the, the, the camera on the gimbal, the gimbal will freak out and make all sorts of uh, horrible noises. The other thing is as well, <coughs> is you must never switch the Phantom on because if the transmitter switches on without the antenna attached, this will also burn out the actual uh, video transmitter. So once again, that's this is the other uh, Spiro net antenna. So this one just simply 
gets screwed on to the phantom, so just screw it on until it stops. Now the best thing to do, because as I said earlier, you want that part flat, is to actually just bend it down like that. And that, is, and that kind of sits as low as possible and that gives it the best possible reception. So now we have those two things on. So as I say, remember, never switch your Phantom on without your GoPro on and without this on. Because you'll either do one of two things, you'll either damage your gimbal or you'll damage your video transmitter. So that's now ready to go. This is obviously ready to go. So what we'll do is we'll turn on the Phantom and we'll turn on the screen and then you can see... Uh, how the GoPro acts. Okay now we're ready to turn the Phantom on for the first time but before we do the first thing we have to do is we actually have to fit the other antenna on. Now this just screws into the video transmitter on the bottom of the model. Now you may want to take this off and on if it doesn't fit into your case. Now one thing to remember is two things never turn your Phantom on without a GoPro on the gimbal because it'll upset the gimbal and make a horrible noise. And also as well, never turn on your Phantom, which will obviously power up the video transmitter without an antenna on, otherwise it will blow the video transmitter. Now to turn it on, the first thing you need to do is remember, turn your transmitter on first, <coughs> so you get your red light. And then to turn the actual model on, all we simply do is the, you have the test button on the back of the battery, so you can push it once, then it'll tell you what's in the battery. So our battery is actually a bit low, normally that would be all the bars lit up. So to turn it on fully, we push it once and we push it again. Now when I turn this on, um, it's important that your Phantom is actually on a level surface when you turn it on for the first time. Gimbal sets itself better and so does the, um, the, uh, the accelerometers inside the Phantom. Now the table I'm working on just now is actually at a slight angle because it makes it a bit better for video. So I'll probably have to hold the Phantom at a slightly funny angle to you just to keep it level. So we just basically push once push hold and then we get that. So I'm just going to turn around and I'm just going to hold the front legs off. Now you'll see the GoPro doing like a funny little dance that is perfectly normal. It's just doing a little self calibration. If you find once it's all fully switched on as well that it sits at a funny angle and um, that's okay too. It just what you, what you find is once it's been switched on for a couple of minutes it'll soon sort itself out. Now to control the camera on the back of the transmitter the Obviously you'll remove this car before you fly, but the tilt lever is basically under here. So if we want to actually tilt the camera up and down, we can do so by doing that. Now, we'll have already fully set all the gains, etc., uh, before we actually uh, ship it to you. So that's why you get a nice sort of slow motion on the camera there and down again. Uh, also what we do before we ship the model as well, the model will be already on its latest firmware, we'll have installed the latest firmwares, we'll have um, calibrated the transmitter and the RC assistant and then done the firmware upgrades and then recalibrated the transmitter with the Phantom assistant uh, and also as I say we will set up things like the gains on the gimbal, the travel uh, endpoint adjustments etc. So it's really just absolutely ready to go. Okay, now we're going to turn on the screen so you can get to see the actual FPV video feed from the camera itself. Now, I um, probably should have pointed this out at the start. Before you switch the actual Phantom on, it's actually a good idea to switch your GoPro on first. Because what can happen, if you're holding your, 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 your camera and you start messing with the GoPro, what will happen is um, the GoPro can actually, see it's kind of, goes to sleep for a second and then powers back up. So ideally, switch your GoPro, your GoPro on the actual Phantom first, switch on and then turn the Phantom on so the GoPro is actually already on. So that will already be on. Another little important point as well is one of our packages, all our screens are UK spec, so what that means is they come already preset to PAL. So what to do is go into your GoPro's menu and set it to PAL, otherwise you'll end up with a very strange sort of rolling picture, never quite there and just kind of constantly rolling. So set that, <coughs> set that to PAL. Another thing as well, the GoPros generally come preset with their on-screen display already on. It's a good idea to switch that off, otherwise what will happen is it, it will overlay its image over the uh, mini iOS D on-screen display that's on the Phantom. So set to PAL and turn the on-screen display off. And then of course to uh, switch on your screen, you just simply press the button and hold it. And you'll see all the everything turns up. Now we'll have already tuned this into the Phantom's receiver so you should not need to actually do any other further adjustments. 
Now, if I just focus in on that if I can, we can't while we're recording. So now, if I move that to there, so you'll now see the on-screen display, and what you'll see on the on-screen display, if we look there, you'll have uh, various informations down the side. For example, we'll have things like that's your ascend and descend. You have your artificial horizon. The diamond, what that does is that actually indicates the direction to home. So if the model's not pointing home, you'll get an arrow to either either side, telling you what way to rotate to get to home. And then when the diamond comes in, you're actually in visual line of sight for uh, home. So you can basically drive home. You'll have things like, uh, what else have we got here? Percentage of battery left. So you've got 38% there. So that's a really good one. And the actual uh, voltage. There's loads of other information like your height, your distance from home, etc. One of the main ones though is, um, I'll probably say more than anything, is things like the amount of satellites you've got, obviously we've got none because we're indoors, um, and is the battery level. Because when that gets to 30%, you'll get your first battery warning. If you leave it and you get down to 15%, the model will go into auto land. So that is a definite one to actually keep uh, an eye on. And also, if you look at the artificial horizon in the center, there we go, and if I tilt the model, it's just like on a real plane, you can see if you're banking, because obviously the actual um, phantom will stay, the, the picture will stay level, because the gimbal will, so that will give you a good, if I, so I'm just trying to get a dark bit so you can see it, and so if I move that, you'll get to see the model banking and pitching backwards and forwards. So... There we go. Now it's important that you don't actually take off until your Phantom is actually ready to take off. And it indicates this by the flashing LED status. This refers to the amount of uh, satellites that it's locked into. And you shouldn't take off until you've got at least six satellites locked into. So if I turn the Phantom on, as always, turn the transmitter on first. Then the button on the back. Push once, push second time and hold. And then it'll power up. Now the backlight, it goes through a wee startup sequence, sequence and then you'll go to a flashing yellow light. When this goes to a green flashing light, green only, that means six satellites plus and you're ready to take off. But it's also important you wait for it to make a home lock location indication. Now just now they're flashing yellow. When we get a fast strobing green light, this is it setting its home location. And what a home location is, is should the Phantom, there we go, that's the Phantom now setting its home location. What this means is if the Phantom should lose signal or you instigate a fail safe return to home, it actually knows where home is. The rapid flashing light means that that spot where it's sitting just now is actually the home location. Now if you take off before you get the rapid flashing light, uh, that basically means is it doesn't know where home is. And a lot of people that have problems uh, in cases of fail safe or the Phantom not doing what it's supposed to be doing, a lot of the times it can mean that either you took off before you had enough satellites, so that would be only green flashing lights, or it can also mean it was a case of basically hadn't set its home location before it took off. Now we are actually indoors so it's kind of struggling either way. Actually just now according to the screen, push that in, get that into shot enough, uh, oh, go that way, go that way, we have actually got um, I think that might be six satellites so we have actually got our green light believe it or not indoors we actually do have six satellites so that is flashing green. But as I say, very important that you let it strobe green flashing light. It actually strobes about 20 times very quickly. And that is your home location. Uh, and as before, uh, don't take off until you actually have um, only flashing green lights. Now, uh, next time it will change colour is actually when your battery runs low. When it gets down to 30%, <coughs> sorry, 30%, and you'll actually start to get a red flashing light. Now, nothing will actually happen at this point. It's just warning you and you should really head home. Now, when it goes into the second level protection, when it starts a rapid flashing red light, it will actually go into auto land to protect the battery. Now, it will start auto descending. Now, you still have control over the Phantom, but you don't have height control. Now, if you want to re regain control, simply all you have to do is toggle your GPS switch a couple of times, this will break it out of um, out of failsafe. Now, as 
I said before, it is at second level protection, so the battery is getting dangerously low, so you should really just clear the obstacle you don't want to land on top of, whether it be water or an obstacle of some description, uh, just clear it, land, and then actually walk over and pick it up, because when it goes into second level protection, you're down to about 15% battery, and this is the recommended minimum that you should ever take your battery down to. Okay, one other thing I just wanted to show you just before I wrap up here is the monitor actually does come with a, an optional uh, sunscreen and it basically just uh, clips together. You'll see what I'll show you because I've put one side on. So you'll have like a little facet there and then that you have a facet there and that simply just clips on. Just clip that in. Like that. And then that, as you see, you've got cutouts for the aerial will simply clip onto the screen. So if you're flying, well, to be honest with you, if you're flying any kind of conditions outside, you really need this screen on. So if I just clip this on, it's a bit awkward because I'm trying to show you what I'm doing rather than having it in an ideal setup. Actually, I'm just going to have to do it properly. Right, that's it clipped on properly. So now what you have is a fully immersed uh, FPV screen. So if you were outside, that would keep all things really nice and dark. And it's a decent size as well. You can see how uh, deep that is. Uh, and that works very well for outdoors. Now just one other thing to sort of point out, you don't really see it there, but if you do get any very, very sort of fine lines scrolling down the screen, don't worry about it, it's just the way it is. You've got a video transmitter amongst an awful lot of electronics. Um, the anti-interference board that we actually fit as part of the setup inside the model, because when you buy a Phantom, if you just buy it as a normal weight from a normal distributor or dealer, um, you actually, one of the things, believe it or not, you have first thing you have to do is you actually have to take your Phantom apart and install the anti-interference board. We've done plenty of videos on it. It's not overly difficult, but your brand new model does need to be taken apart. Now, as part of the uh, building up and setting up of the of this uh, FPV package that we do on the Phantom, <coughs> this is one of the things we do. We take your model apart. We put the anti-interference board to help with things like um, interference on the FPV system. And we also um, obviously install all the specialised plug and play cabling um, and that is all part. So it does take us quite a while and we do offer this as a, as a service. You can select it when you're purchasing your Phantom package. Uh, this is the Phantom package, the Phantom 2 package with 7 inch diversity screen package. We also do a very similar package with FPV goggles. Pretty much it's exactly the same sort of setup but you've got a set of uh, goggles instead. <coughs> so. Well, I hope you found this video helpful in getting your aerial video package all ready to fly. But just before we go, I just want to talk a quick bit about safety. Now, every country will have rules and regulations for flying aerial video uh, multi-rotors and quadcopters. Now, completed with all our packages, we have a little information pack. And in this pack, uh, the first page will just include things like links to uh, the, our, our vid getting started videos. <laughs> things like uh, Facebook groups, uh, RC groups, forum, etc., which you'll find lots of useful information. But over, <clears throat> this is the full guidelines for here in the UK by the CAA, and this will have all the various uh, rules and regs on flying your multi rotors. But to break it down, and I'm sure most countries will have very similar rules, is you must be uh, at least 50 metres away from a person or a vehicle or a building when you're flying your multi-rotor. So you can't go flying up your street um, or close to buildings, etc. And then, of course, there's just the obvious ones. Always look for things that could cause you some interference by, like, big transmitters, buildings, uh, you know, power lines, anything like that. These are the sort of things that can cause people having issues. Um, but if you abide by all those rules and make sure you fly and set up in the correct place, you shouldn't have any problem. Um, well, I'm Rick from Marinth Models. We're a bricks and mortar model shop for the last 40 years. And if you are in the UK or Europe, I hope if you are thinking of buying a Phantom 2 package, you'll uh, check out our website. Um, if you're not, 
then um, always a good thing to check out your local dealer. If he's a proper bricks and mortar hobby shop, it's worth checking him out. You tend to find the local guys will just go that little bit extra for you. Uh, and there's no need to be handing all your cash over to the big internet box shifters who will always just refer you back to DJI when you need help. So check out the little guys, they're always worth a look. And uh, thank you very much. Thank you.